So the last time we look at the, what is the mass, weight, and force, density, amount, and the temperature. Today we will cover the rest of five different units for pressure, gas pressure, energy, power, efficiency. Okay, and and then we will um, have a little glimpse um, to see the what is the Microsoft Excel. I think everyone have a experience using the Excel. Okay, so let's look at the pressure first. Okay. So what is the pressure? Pressure. The definition of pressure is uh, force acting over an area. Okay, so here you can see the force is Newton or it can be a uh, pound force. Uh, the area it can be many different measure, many different units such as uh, uh, centimeter cube um, square, meter square, inch squares. But here the interesting is they are all square. Okay, so area is always length times uh, uh, width. Um, so there is square. SI unit for pressure is Pascal. Pascal. So you can see force over the area. So Newton is force and the area. So, um, meter square. So um, this is the image that uh, when I was in the University of Michigan, uh, we tried to build a very comfortable, very comfortable um, driver seat in terms of pressures. So think about if you have high pressure on a certain your body, then your that part uh, can get easily fatigued. So we try to avoid that issues. We try to um, distribute the overall pressures well distributed and well balanced and try to avoid any um, high peak points. Okay? So uh, we used this pressure mat. These are two pressure mat. This is uh, uh, manufactured by X sensors, which is a very expensive one. I guess it's uh, uh, ten thousand U.S. dollar per each per each um, pressure measurement tool. But anyway, here is the sub subjective uh, seating pressures. Uh, this is subject, and this is pressure when they sit on this. Uh, driver seat. Alright, anyway, this is the pressure, but we have uh, four different pressures, air pressure, hydrostatic pressure, total pressure, and the gas pressures. So we have, we are going to see one by one. Let's look at the air pressure first. So here you can see the unit is ATM, PSI, which is most familiar with the PSI, the Pascal, and the millimeter mercury. Okay. The weight of air above us. Uh, let's look at the air pressures. So, think about like this: we are living on Earth, and uh, actually there are pressures, but we can't recognize. Um, there is air pressure, which is fourteen point seven psi, because the air has weight. So. There is a pressures, um, but our body system is exactly the same as the, the air pressure uh, system, so we don't feel that much pressures. But if we go deeply into the water or submerge the water, then we can realize there is a uh, high pressures. Okay, but that is hydrostatic pressure. But right now we are looking at the air pressure. 670 millimeter mercury, which is the same as the 14.7 psi, but unit is quite different, and the number is also quite different. The millimeter mercury is um, uh, when we uh, give some air pressure on a certain. Um, here you can see the mercury. The mercury go increase because of the this air pressures. Then we can read the length, how much mercury increased uh, in the vacuum. So that is the how much uh, 760 millimeter that much um, the mercury go up increased, and the another one is the Pascal. Pascal is a um, 
here 1013 hectopascal which is the standard uh, when we standing at the sea level this is the standard but if you think about the uh, hurricane um, the, the, in the center of the hurricane the air pressure is quite low so probably you know the wind where the wind the, does wind came from the wind is always came from the high um, air pressure to low air pressures so that is the direction of the wind okay so that's why the hurricane Matthew uh, made um, 140 mile per hour the maximum the wind uh, speed okay it's a very huge speed so let's look at the small video short video Absolute pressure. Absolute pressure. They use the uh, the perfect vacuum condition as a reference. So think about uh, right now. Our so as I said, we are living on Earth, and the Earth um, on the sea level there is air pressures. Always there is air pressures. But if if you think about in the space, there is no air pressures because there is no air. Um, but thing is. Um, the absolute means we can consider the vacuum condition as a reference so what we are going to say is when we measure the tire air pressure on a certain area then this tire pressure is 35 psi g this g is meaning of gauge okay so we measure the pressure tire pressure using this gauge and plus there is air pressure so, so at the sea level your tire absolute pressure is 49.7 psi a absolute means a psi a um, but at the 12,500 feet above the sea level uh, like uh, Lake Titicaca it's very um, uh, highest levels compared to the sea levels um, the absolute pressure should be seen but the air pressure will be low because of the high altitude less air because it's a high altitude then the your tire uh, air pressure will be increased so your tire will become more um, uh, bigger because of this uh, pressure Uh, then let's look at the hydrostatic pressures uh, Pascal's law um, if you dive deeply 
then you will get more pressure based on this Pascal's law. The hydrostatic pressure is equals to rho, which is density, times g, which is gravity, times height. The height is how much depth you dive into the water. Um, so here, as I said, the pressure is force over area. Okay, uh, the pressure is force over area. The force is weight. The weight, the weight is mass times gravity. Okay, then what is the law? Law is mass divided by volume, right? So we can say like this, and then the volume is area times height. So here we can get low. That means the um, the density of water and the gravity is 9.8 meter per second square and the height how much dive you dip into dip into. So there is only three pack factors: low, gravity, and the height. Okay. And I found that uh, the article said if you dive more than 20 meters, then you would feel like a drunken. That is, a, we call it martini effect. Okay, when you drink like a martini, drink one cup of martini, then you will feel drunk. Then it's same feeling uh, when you dive 20 meters um, deeply. Then you will feel the same way. Um, so let's look at the, we, let's calculate the hydrostatic pressures only in this time. Uh, so a diver dive the water uh, let's say go 20 feet okay then what is the hydrostatic pressures the hydrostatic pressure is the water is 1000 kilogram per uh, cubic meters gravity is 9.8 meter per second square let's assume that and the height is 20 feet which is 6.1 meter so here we can just uh, simply multiply these three things then we can get it um, around the 59 uh, kilopascal for the hydrostatic pressures but uh, we have to think about the total pressure what is total pressure means the total pressure let's see the small video here or we experience about 14.7 psi of atmospheric pressure we refer to this type of pressure as static pressure when the wind starts to blow we have to deal with the added force due to the speed of this pressure the velocity pressure. The sum of the static and velocity pressures equals the total pressure. Okay, so the total pressure means uh, no matter what we acting or moving or diving around, uh, there is a, a pressure which means static pressure and that static pressure comes from the air. Okay, so air is always just that is static pressure and the plus if there is a wind or if we go dive submerged more deeply then if we go deeply dive then hydrostatic would be increased that kind of dynamic pressure we call it velocity pressures okay so when we calculate the total pressure we have to sum up those static pressure plus um, the velocity pressure so total pressure of diver is we there are the waters and uh, we have air pressures so here you can see uh, there are air pressure plus hydrostatic pressure that is the total pressure of the diver the air pressure is uh, around the uh, um, 1000 hectopascal plus uh, the hydrostatic pressure as we calculated before it was uh, around 60 kilopascal so we sum up these two pascal and we can convert it to ATM one ATM is uh, around 100 um, k pascal so that is 1.59 atm if you think about uh, uh, on the sea level the atm is only one right but if you go dive it's 1.59 times higher pressure than you stand in the uh, than you stand on the beach okay um then what is gas pressures? Um, let's look at the short video. The independent gas particles. 
balls inside a slightly deflated basketball collide with one another and the walls of the basketball, causing pressure. How could you raise the pressure in the ball? You could add more air particles to the ball. As the number of particles increases, so does their number of collisions per second with the wall of the basketball, which first pushes out the walls of the ball and then raises the pressure. You can also alter gas pressure by changing the gas temperature. Warming up the basketball causes the gas particles to move faster. The faster moving particles collide more frequently with the wall of the basketball, causing a rise in pressure. As the gas pressure increases, so does the volume of the ball. Until, eventually, the ball explodes. I think this is a very good video to explain what is the gas pressures. So here you can see the ideal gas law. P is a pressure and V is a volume and N is a amount, so amount from the chemistry and R is a, a gas constant. Here is the constant and the T is temperature. So what I'm going to say is that the gas pressure is a little bit different compared to other uh, total pressure, hydrostatic pressure, because this gas pressure is affected by temperature. So if you get more, uh, increase the temperature, then you can see if you increase the temperature, then volume and the pressure will be increased. If you decrease the temperature, then volume and the pressure will be decreased. All right. And if you add more uh, amount of the gas, then it obviously increases the volume and the pressures. That's the concept. Let's look at the energy. Energy is, um, uh, think, think of like this. Energy is a force times distance. Okay, And uh, it, it's always the same. There is a force, and if you exert the force for a certain distance, then it's work. So work is energy. Same, the potential energy is if we lift lift up a chair for a while and uh, there is a weight and height, that is energy. That's how much energy we need. But uh, if there is a time, then that is a, we have to consider as a power. But we will see that things um, in the next slide. But anyway, here we have four different type of energies, work energy, potential energy, kinetic energy, and the thermal energy. Okay. Uh, so let's look at first about the potential energy or work. It's the same. Um, so we let's say we have a 50 kilogram load, uh, like a table or some uh, very big um, computer or some chairs, whatever, and we want to raise it up vertically using this uh, machine um, for 5 meters okay in this case then what is how much energy do we need okay we have a 50 kilogram load we want to raise it vertically for 5 meters so potential energy is weight times height in this case the weight is mass times gravity so 50 kilogram times 9.8 meter per second square times uh, 5 meter so that is 200 2450 kilogram uh, meter square per second square so this is joule actually so 2450 joule How about the heat, heating energy? Heating energy. Uh, have you heard about BTU and the calorie before? Um, BTU is a stand for British Thermal Unit. What is the meaning of BTU? BTU is amount of heat uh, energy required to increase uh, one Fahrenheit of one pound of water. Okay, so BTU, we have one pound of water. If we want to increase this one pound of water by one degree Fahrenheit, 
that is one BTU. The one calorie is we want to increase the one degree in Celsius of one gram of water. So let's look at some uh, examples about the BTU, hot coffee. Um, people like drinking the hot coffee approximately 70 degrees in Celsius. So let's assume we have a um, coffee, the mass is 470 gram of coffee. Okay, we have this amount of coffee and then we want to raise this coffee by um, 30 degree in Celsius. The delta T is a 30 degree and the mass is 470 gram and the C, P, C is a, a constant uh, for uh, it depending on the material but let's assume we have it, uh, it was given by 4.18 joule per gram Celsius degree okay so we can just simply multiply these three uh, things then we will get the 446 BTU okay um, so HVAC is stands for heating ventilation and air conditioning industry okay. um, how much BTU we need to uh, warm up the, the air in a certain um, amount certain space area uh, if the room or the place is big then we need more BTU to heat up the air so that's how we found it okay and the calorie versus calorie um, I usually go to subway to have a uh, subway sandwich and they always tell us okay this subway this turkey sandwich six inch long has uh, 330 calorie and 670 calorie so as I mentioned that before the definition of the calorie is increasing one degree of in Celsius of one gram of water right but here you can see a little different between the lowercase calorie and the uppercase calorie so here you, what you can find is carbohydrate hydrate four it contains four calories which is 4,000 calories that is 4 kilocalories so here you can see there are uh, differences we have to multiply 1,000 uh, the kil actually this is kilocalorie alright And let's see the power. Um, power is energy per time. So uh, the SI unit is watt. Okay. So if you think, if you see this watt, energy divided by time. Think about the last uh, case example. If we want to lift up a uh, 50 kilogram uh, chair for um, five meters, then we need this much of potential energy but if we want to lift very quickly then we need more power for example we want to lift in 60 seconds 60 seconds we just want just to divide it then we, how much we power we need we, we need 41 power but if we want to lift more fastly like in 20 seconds we need three times higher than the previous one okay. let's look at the efficiency um, so here's a little story uh, when I was uh, when I came to the US when I first time came to the US I, I was shocked to see this kind of a, a burb, a light burb uh, it says standard incandescent incandescent light bulb um, 
But thing is, in South Korea, we usually don't use this uh, verb because efficiency of this verb is pretty low. For example, if we put the hundred percent of power to light up, then it's light up, but the output light is only five percent. That means ninety-five percent or more uh, is um, um, just uh, it's waste. Okay, so efficiency is pretty bad. It's just five percent efficiency. So uh, we have a loss of ninety-five percent. Um, solar energy. Solar energy usually have a 28% efficiencies. That's pretty okay. Uh, now it, it's getting increased. But 28% is still what we have. Uh, but let's say uh, we have 2600 watt from the sun. This is the power. And uh, the power. If we have 28% uh, efficiency that means seventy two percent of power will loss okay so actually our house will take seven hundred fifty watt then uh, I'm just wondering that if we um, use this solar energy it's very um, environmental friendly um, energy resources right there is no um, gas or no pollutions so it's very clean but if we want to use this solar energy to replace all the fossil energies in the United States how much land do we need actually Elon Musk he is a CEO of Tesla and SpaceX he made us a presentation last year so let's look at this presentation Yeah, um, that was um, what we learned so far. So we learned what is the force and what is the difference between force and weight, mass and uh, pressure, air pressure, hydrostatic pressure, total pressure, uh, energy, power, uh, and efficiency. All right, uh, now we are going to look at uh, Microsoft Excel. Uh, I think everyone has a chance to use this Microsoft Excel. I'm, I'm using this software every day since I was uh, 20 years old. Uh, it's, it's about uh, 13 years ago. Um, it's a very useful tool, so 
everybody knows about uh, the Excel is used for the data input and make a table and they have great functions to calculate the statistics and also they provide very uh, strong plotting functions uh, using chart functions right 2d sometimes a uh, line graph very um, massive different kind of graph we can draw in um, using the Excel so I think everyone can use this um, software so I will skip this part but uh, I'd like to tell you that there is a function to calculate the mean and standard deviation which is very important average and the standard deviation this is the function so you write this function using your keyboard and uh, just select the range this is data range then you the Excel will tell you what is the mean and standard deviation this is very simple okay uh, let's look at one example that I developed uh, I used the Excel uh, in my research um, my supervisor Dr. Matt Reed he um, suggest me to develop statistical model to predict the driving postures uh, using their stature and the weight and their seat configurations so I developed the model and I think I explained this concept uh, before the previous class uh, anyway you look at please look at this uh, functions it's very um, complex and uh, there are many uh, input variables and the numbers here so um, Matt suggested me how about uh, making some Excel spreadsheet so that we can just simply change the number then the result will show up automatically that's a great idea so uh, I create the Excel spreadsheet um, you know it can if I change the seat height uh, like uh, 180 millimeter and uh, if I change some numbers then the uh, Excel will automatically change the position of the eye location and hip locations uh, using the based on the developed statistical models which is applied into this spreadsheet and the right image shows that uh, it's continuously and at the same time it's a real-time change okay so it's very useful uh, for um, seat engineer and uh, um, uh, some auto industry people um, using these statistical models. Uh, today uh, and uh, uh, continuously we learned about what is the mass, weight, force, density, amount, and temperature. And we learned pressure, gas pressure, energy, power, and efficiency. And we had a chance to glimpse the Microsoft Excel. Thanks for watching this short video. Have a great day.